Hi, Steve with Brownells, and I'm here with Bobby Tyler of Tyler Gunworks, and today we're bringing you a special gun from the vault. Actually, three special guns. These are all highly customized Ruger Bearcats. And Bobby, you built them. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them? Well, I'll tell you, the Ruger Bearcat is a great platform to take and play with. And they're no stranger, no new thing to the scene here. They've been here since 1958. For those that don't know, what exactly is a Bearcat? We're, we all know the single six. but Right. So the Bearcat's a smaller version. As you'll notice, they are a smaller frame. And the grip frame doesn't come off like it does the single six. All machined out of one the piece. The grip frame and the receiver are all one piece. Nice. Which makes them fun, yet challenging to customize. I can imagine. A little bit more difficult. Kind of like the old Remington single actions? Quite similar. 18, Quite similar, 1800s? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. Very cute little package. They don't weigh much. They don't, and they're they're so easy to carry. Um, they're so comfortable, and that's why they're not exactly just a kid's gun anymore. I see. You know, I back see. in the day, they were kind of known as the grandkid gun or or a gun for small hands, and now you can you can be about as any guy you want and be comfortable to carry one of these. Well. I'm sure they're extremely comfortable to carry and get carried a lot, so that's probably why people want them to look fancy. They do, they do, and you know I get asked all the time, what calibers can we can we convert these to? Mm. You know, in, in our shop, the only thing that we're comfortable converting these to are 22 magnums. Okay. Uh, okay. It's a smaller frame. Everything's shrunk down. The pressures, you know, there's right. just too many things to to think about. Right. So center fire is probably not a great idea. I've had bad experience with some center fire issues and okay. for safety, for longevity, I, I stick with the 22 Magnum. Besides, what's, what's more, you know, what more do you need? 22 Magnum's plenty in a small package like that. That and Ruger, they're so good about meeting the demands. People asked for a small frame, 32, 327, guess what? The single seven, <laughs> they're there. They're the single there. six. I mean, there's so many different cartridges built on that platform that I'm fine with leaving this as a little 22, 22 Magnum carry gun. Yep, probably a great idea. And these are still in production. They are, they are. These are, all three of these models are Lipsy's exclusive models. Okay. Um, they go to a lot of trouble to bring these out in packages that people already want. Nice, very so. nice. But the factory Ruger's are available as well in regular blued finish or stainless? Yes. Okay. Yes, they are. So, and... I haven't looked at the grips, but they're going to be typical Ruger grips on They them. will. They will. So, so nice. let's dive right into these and let's, let's talk a little bit about them. Yeah. So as you'll notice, there's there's two here, the two stainless guns. They're a set. Okay. And they, they also happen to be consecutively serial numbered. Nice. So I decided to do something a little outside the box and keep them as a set. And so one of them we... Uh, converted to 22 Magnum. Right. The other one we left in 22 Long Rifle. And we imported some Mammoth Ivory that was a big enough block to build both sets out of one block so that you have a matching set oh, nice. all the way across. Nice. So, just for instance, if I was doing a work order on these, it would look something like this. You know, you're going through, you do action, accuracy package, a check off color case, stainless hammer and trigger. These particular guns, we would go ahead and, if you'll notice, these are both the uh, non-fluted cylinders. Oh, yeah. So both of these had that printed, stamped roll mark around them. Right. So we removed the, the pressed roll marking off the cylinder. I like the look. Then, then down on the next part on the work order, it's going to say blast. So basically, I took and we bead blasted these. Right. And uh, I've got one of my guys in the shop who, he's our, our Bearcat guy, and that's what he does. And he's probably one of the best with Bearcats that I've had the opportunity to work with. It's a nice target crown on there. Yes, there is. He's, so we do the target crown, that's part of the accuracy package, as well as cylinder gap. I mean, there's, it's no different than, you know, doing this on any other conversion or any other platform, you're still doing all the basics and then you're 
you're doing it all in a nice, tidy little package. So these are still just as accurate as a full-blown single six these or anything? These little rascals shoot. Wow. They do. Just in a smaller package. One more thing that uh, I get asked about, well, what about the difference in the 22 and the 22 Magnum? What about the barrel? What about the twist? You know, Ruger's addressed that issue. They've dealt with that in the single six. And in their barrel production, they've got us to a point where we can flip back and forth without yeah. having any major issues. Yeah, a lot of guys do it without thinking on their convertibles. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't Absolutely. seem to make any difference. So this one here, uh, this is your color cased version. Yeah. You know, it's, and if you'll notice, there is a barrel difference, barrel length difference uh, between the, the blued and the stainless. Sure, sure. A little bit longer, not much. So as far as leather goes, uh, there's some pretty good leather floating around. Uh, I reached out to one of my close partners that I work with as far as uh, in the industry, and I said, hey, what can you offer for, for what we're doing right now? And boy, did he step up to the plate. I see that. Uh, these are Baranti leather. Uh, Mike Baranti, he, he just really, he really answered here. And super nice. Holsters. If you'll notice on the on the back of the leather, he marked his logo and our logo, and that was that was pretty neat, pretty special. Nice little package there. I love those grips. Just love those grips. It's hard to beat Mammoth. Yeah. Of course, uh, we went with the Holly on these, which gives us that ivory appearing. Right. But these are ivory. And highly, Holly is super tough stuff, isn't it? It's, you know, it's been very durable. I haven't had any issues yet. Hmm. I haven't had any of the warping issues. I haven't had any durability issues. It's something that I've, I've really been pleased with. Now these little guns are probably a little intricate to work on. Are they tougher than a regular Ruger job? They are. The smaller the frame gets, the more intricate and the harder it is to make the little oh. parts do the same thing as a big part. I can believe it. But so, once you get it set. So 22, 22 Magnum, anything different about the Magnum? It's just straight conversion, is that all it is? You know, we were having an issue that uh, we, we kind of tried to live with and deal with, and it was something that we couldn't deal with. Let me grab this 22 Magnum. So in the shopkeeper, everything's shrunk down. Sure. This is the three inch barrel. One of the things that you had to think about was extraction, getting the cartridges out of the cylinder sure. and if you'll notice when you have the rod pushed back there's a very small oh, you're amount. only moving the thing and so what you'd find is you would get it to here and then you would take your fingernail and actually have to dig the cartridge out yeah. so what we did is we made a small modification uh, I actually t went to my team and I said this is not acceptable let's do something about this and the light bulb came on and we got together and Next thing you know, uh, Matt, Dusty, and I, we were talking about it. Next thing you know, they had the ejector rod out of this on the milling machine, mm -hmm. made a small a modification to the ejector rod. And so basically, uh, and this is something that at a later time I can show you at the range, but you actually go ahead and start, you catch the case of the mouth. Oh, you okay, know, the mouth of the case. Yeah, the mouth yeah. of the case. and. You have a full... So then, yeah, it is full-length ejection. You have a full-length ejection, even wow. with the 22 Magnum. You just got to learn a little technique. And that's something that if a customer wanted to with the 22 Long Raffle to mm -hmm. increase speed, uh, yeah. you, you can make that modification. But on the Magnum, it's pretty much a must, and it'll be a standard modification with the Magnum I conversion. I think it be worthwhile on all of them. Really. As well as one of the things that's very important to me as well is when we do a Magnum conversion, we go ahead and mark them. Okay. With the 22 Magnum, yeah. just so that I've had people say, well, can we do the conversion and not, not mark it? Absolutely not. If you're yeah. going to do it, do it right and keep it safe. Yeah, exactly. Be smart about what you're doing. Pretty slick little package. So, it, you know, with, with the demand, answering demand, I really think that the Bearcat could be the, the gun of 2021. Really nice little package, and people do seem to buy them as soon as Ruger cranks them out, so... Ruger's, they're, they're trying to answer the demand, Lipsy's, and uh, obviously, we're, like I said, I've got a guy in our shop that's dedicated. Dusty's working on Bearcats almost exclusively right wow. now, just because of the demand. That says and, something right there. Yeah. 
Well, that's the Ruger Bearcat. We hope you enjoyed it, and we sure want to thank Bobby for coming by and giving us the short class on it. If you have any comments or questions about the Bearcats or about custom Rugers or anything else, leave us a comment below. We'd like to hear from you. In the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we bring you another gun from the vault. Mm -hmm.